Hi guys, my name is Tanya and this is my September wrap up. This wrap up comes to you with no books to physically show you because as you may have noticed from my background I am back in my mum's house and I didn't have time to film any footage before I left Cardiff to come here because I've had a cold in the week from hell at work. But we're gonna get down to it anyway. So I read five books and two comics slash graphic novels during the month of September which I'm really happy with because I read five books last month so it's like that settling as my kind of standard for the month but then I add in a couple of graphic novels just to change it up a little bit. And I'm gonna start with the comics because I don't really know how to talk about them at all, so I'm just gonna have them as a nice little addition at the beginning of this wrap-up. So during September I moved on to volume 4 of the new 52 version of Wonder Woman. This volume is entitled War, and I started reading these comics after watching Batman vs Superman and being very interested in Wonder Woman and wanting to know more about her. Apparently where the new 52 is the current reboot it's very easy to get into as it's quite current, and I have been struggling with following who's who, especially amongst the gods and their children, as this comic focuses a lot around Greek mythology. I was actually contemplating giving up on this series after reading this volume, which I borrowed from the library to save me spending another 10 plus quid on it, and this is because I'm having a lot less trouble following the other superhero series which I'm currently reading, which is the Kamala Khan Miss Marvel, and where I haven't read a lot of comics before, I don't know whether it's a DC versus Marvel thing or just the two that I happen to have chosen, but yeah, I was going to quit and then in volume 4 Diana was super sassy and the characters were excellent and some people who I didn't want to die did die but it was really good for moving the story forward and the next volume looks like it's going to be incredibly interesting as there are going to be some changes to Mount Olympus. And I'm hooked again, I've already bought volume 5. I rated it 4 stars. The other ongoing comic that I read in September was Lumberjanes volume 4 which is entitled Out of Time. I am absolutely 100% obsessed with this series. In this volume we spend a lot more time with Jen, who is the Roanoke Cabin's senior camper, so she's a little bit more mature and kind of supervises their adventures in a reluctant way. And I absolutely loved this sidestep to focus on someone who could be seen as a minor character, and instead it brought her to the centre stage and highlighted how important she is to the girls, especially as she is always present in the comics whilst trying to be the voice of reason. I also find her probably to be the most relatable character for me in this comic series. She likes books, she likes to be warm, she likes to be quiet, and she also has a multitude of excuses for having not learned to drive from the environment to its statistical dangerousness. And yeah, I just think she's great, and this volume just really showed that. We also get a good chunk of backstory for the camp itself and for Rosie, the current camp director, during this volume. We're gradually seeing even more that things aren't just superficially not as they seem, they are deep down to the core of the camp not as they seem. And it's opening it up into a bigger, broader mystery for the Lumberjanes to hopefully solve as we progress into future editions of this comic. So I loved this, I rated it four and a half out of five stars. So the first actual book that I finished during the month of September was A Hangover from August and it was the novelization of the Ghostbusters movie by Nancy Holder. This is because I am trash slash I am obsessed with the film. I don't generally read movie novelizations, in fact I think this was the first movie novelization that I've ever read and as this is based on the screenplay it didn't quite have the nuances that the actresses were able to give to the characters in the film. However, However, it does give us some really good backstory into the characters, especially into the past friendship between Abby and Erin. So I would say that if you enjoyed the movie, this has a really good background, and I rated this a good solid three to three and a half stars. Next up I read If I Was Your Girl by Meredith Russo. This follows a girl called Amanda as she moves in with her father, attends a new school, makes new friends, finds new romances, all following from struggles in her old home as Amanda is a trans woman. I have not read any books in my memory with a trans character as the protagonist and I found this book a particularly worthwhile place to start as the author herself is not only a trans woman but includes two notes at the back of the text, one for cis readers and one for trans readers. In these notes she explains where the flaws in the story that she tells in the book lie and also acknowledges that everyone's experience is different, which is something that we should all know but it's really really good to have a reminder of that. So although the focus of this book is Amanda in the present, it does flash back to her past when she was known as Andrew and the struggles that she faces coming to terms with herself, with the family struggles involved and with other people and consequently we get a broader insight into the potential aspects of trans issues regarding coming out, transitioning, being pre-op and post-op and just a generally broader spectrum. I found this book really stressful as I did have concerns for Amanda both in the present and in the past and although the 
the reasons for being scared did come to fruition over the course of the novel, there were also some really beautiful moments of acceptance, both for Amanda herself and from the people around her. So I rated it four and a half out of five stars and would highly, highly recommend it. I then read The Girl of Ink and Stars by Kieran Millwood Hargrave, and this is about the daughter of a cartographer called Isabella, who longs to explore and map her island home, the Isle of Joya. However, people have been forbidden to leave her hometown since the arrival many years ago of a character called the Governor. When the Governor's daughter, who also happens to be Isabella's best friend, disappears into the uncharted territory of the island, Isabella is able to leave her hometown as part of a quest to bring her friend back, and along the way she encounters monsters, myth, and adventure. This book has such good mysterious elements to it from the start, from why is the Governor there and what is he doing there and why is he so horrible, through to what is really happening on the island as a whole. And I would definitely not have guessed the ultimate ending of this book even as it was approaching, as it plays out a bit differently to how you would expect it to, which is really exciting. I did struggle with exactly what was happening towards the end of the book, but this is a problem that I often have with middle grade and especially fantasy books. When things get very action-packed, I find it very hard to follow what's happening logically, and consequently things get a little bit blurred in my mind, but I'm pretty sure that this is something that a rereading would solve. This book was just intriguing, fantastical fun, and I rated it five stars. The next book that I read was Reading Lolita in Tehran by Azana Fisi, and this was the book that I read during the Diversathon from the 12th to the 19th of September. This is a memoir following Nafisi's time as a lecturer and beyond that in post-Islamic revolution Iran. A lot of the reviews for this book view it as very self-indulgent and also criticise the literary commentary contained within as being unoriginal and kind of dry. And to be honest, I find most memoirs self-indulgent. It's someone writing about themselves, it's going to be self-indulgent. So this didn't really affect my reading of this book, especially as the life that the author has led has taken place under such volatile and strenuous circumstances. So it didn't seem as self-involved because I was learning about a completely different political regime as I was reading the book. And I also found that the literary criticism that Nafisi chose to use fit really well with the narrative. And as someone who doesn't actually study literature, I found it a really interesting insight into the books that she chose to use. I find it really interesting to learn about the lives of women in different places in the world and under different circumstances. So although this wasn't fiction, I've gotten really into to reading memoirs as another form of diverse reading, and I rated this three and a half to four stars. The final book that I read during the month of September was, of course, Empire of Storms by Sarah J Maas. As this is the fifth book in the Throne of Glass series, it's pretty hard to talk about it broadly without spoilers, but this book did exactly what I wanted it to do, and then some. I wasn't so fussed about the gratuitous sex scenes, which you can't exactly say aren't as subtle as the scenes in the A Court of Thorns and Roses trilogy, because none of those are particularly subtle either but the scenes in this book felt in a way less built up, potentially because it's been something that's been running across a few books in the series rather than in the space of one book so it was less present in the reader's mind. But I didn't mind them being there, it's, you know, there for whatever floats your boat. And in spite of other people's criticisms of the lack of kale in this book, I didn't particularly mind as it brought other characters like Manon and Lysandra right to the fore of the story, and I really, really appreciated that. This was just excellent fun, I rated it five stars because I had an excellent time reading it. So yeah, that was my September wrap-up, I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know down below if you read any of these books, what you thought of them, if any of them interested you and yeah I hope that you're all having an absolutely lovely day and I will see you again very very soon. Goodbye!